Healthcare workers in all healthcare settings should always adhere to the latest World Health Organization guidelines on hand hygiene and barrier precautions before and after contact with a patient, bodily fluids, or patient surroundings. For more information, please watch our video entitled Hand Hygiene. NICU to Nursery, Gastrostomy Tube Care by Denise Casey General Principles of G-Tubes Two commonly used gastrostomy tubes, also called G-Tubes in pediatric patients, include the AMT and Mickey. Despite some design differences, the purpose, care, and function of these G-Tubes are very similar. G-tubes are placed into the child's stomach through an opening called a stoma. It's used when the child is unable to tolerate feeds or medicines by mouth. The G-tube is stabilized within the stomach via a water-filled balloon, and the external base rests on the surface of the skin over the stomach. The G-tube diameter, length, and balloon fill volume frequently appear on the external base of the tube as shown in this figure. However, not all tubes are marked in the same fashion. For example, this Mickey G-tube displays only the diameter and tube length. This is a 12 French G-tube and it is 1.5 centimeters in length. The letters BAL indicate the balloon port. However, the balloon volume does not appear on the external base. The balloon volume is determined by the surgeon with initial placement and can be adjusted based on consultation with the child's gastroenterologist or surgeon. Most G-tubes connect to their extension set for delivery of medication and nutrients in a similar manner. To connect the AMT G-tube to the extension set, begin by opening the cap and line up the black mark on the extension set with the black mark on the tube. Gently press the extension set into place. You will feel a click. Turn the extension set in the direction of the arrow to lock it in place. It is recommended that extension sets be disconnected from the G-tube when not in use. To disconnect the extension set from the G-tube, turn the extension set in the opposite direction, reverse, of the arrow and line up the black marks again. Gently pull up on the extension set to take it off and close the cap. This video demonstrates how to connect and disconnect the extension set using the Mickey G-tube. Open the cap and line up the black mark on the extension set with the black mark on the tube. Gently press the extension set into place. Turn the extension set in the direction of the arrow to lock it in place. To take the extension set off, turn it in the opposite direction of the arrow and line it up with the black marks again. Gently pull up on the extension set to take it out. Always clean the extension set with soap and water after use. Rinse well and let air dry. Replace the extension set weekly. Care of the G-Tube Care of the G-Tube includes cleaning the G-Tube site, applying a dressing, and securing the G-Tube. Gather your supplies before you begin. You will need a right angle extension set for continuous feeding or straight extension set for bolus feeding a 30 to 60 cc catheter tip syringe, and a 5 to 10 cc slip tip syringe. Soap and water for cleaning the equipment, bottled water or sterile water to fill the balloon, and tape for securing the tube, and an absorbent or gauze dressing if needed. To clean the G-tube site, wash the skin around and under the tube each day with soap and water and gently pat dry. Try not to move the tube around too much because the opening may become stretched, causing stomach juices to leak out and irritate the skin. While cleaning the site, assess for redness or signs of infection. The area around the G-tube may be a little pink. This is normal. If the skin is red, warm to touch, has a pustule, green or yellow drainage, or odor, these findings should be brought to the attention of the gastroenterologist or surgeon as these signs may be indicative of an infection. After the site is cleaned, rotate the tube a quarter turn daily to prevent skin irritation from the tube staying in the same position. Make sure the tube rests lightly on the skin surface or dressing. 
There should be a thin, dime-sized space between the tube and surface of the skin or dressing. Use a gauze pad or absorbent dressing around the tube only if there is fluid leaking out and irritating the skin. Change the dressing at least daily or more often if it gets wet. Stabilizing the G-tube and extension set. If the child has a newly placed G-tube, it must be secured to the skin surface with tape for at least the first six weeks. It is recommended to continue stabilization for active children and children who seem to pull at the tube. To stabilize the G-tube, open the cap, place a piece of tape across the arm of the plug. The second piece of tape goes over the balloon port, making sure you are still able to put a syringe on the balloon port, and then close the plug. The third and fourth pieces of tape go on to each side, overlapping the other pieces of tape and getting as close to the tube as possible. The tape is applied in a tic-tac-toe pattern, making sure that the tube is securely taped to the skin surface. To stabilize the extension set, use a piece of tape or a securement device to secure the extension set to the surface of the skin on the child's abdomen. This will help prevent it from being inadvertently pulled, resulting in injury to the G-tube site. Checking the water in the balloon. Make sure the prescribed amount of water remains in the balloon by checking it weekly. Prior to checking the balloon, ensure the G-tube is taped securely to the abdomen. To check the balloon, attach a 5 to 10 ml slip tip syringe to the balloon port. While holding the tube in place with one hand, gently pull back on the syringe and aspirate the water from the balloon. Observe the color and volume of the water. The water should be clear and the volume should be the prescribed amount. Once the clarity and volume is confirmed, gently push the water back into the balloon through the balloon port. To remove the syringe from the port, continue to stabilize the tube, press on the end of the syringe, and gently pull the syringe tip out of the balloon port. In the meantime, if there is less water than there should be in the balloon, use a syringe to add more water to ensure the prescribed amount is in the balloon. Only use bottled or sterile water to fill the balloon. Never fill the balloon with air or saline. If the water in the balloon is not clear, replace it with new water. If there is less water in the balloon than prescribed, or if the water is discolored, there may be a problem with the balloon. Call the child's gastroenterologist or surgeon. If you cannot get the water out of the balloon, take the syringe off and make sure nothing is clogging the port. Try taking the water out of the balloon again. If you still cannot get the water out, call your child's gastroenterologist or surgeon. Management of a dislodged or clogged G-tube. Criteria to replace the G-tube includes every three to four months or sooner if fluid is leaking from the middle of the G-tube. This may mean the G-tube's one-way valve is worn down. When water is missing from the balloon after two weekly balloon checks. When measures to unclog the tube are not successful. Or dislodgement, the tube falls out. What to do if the G-tube is clogged? If the G-tube becomes clogged, try to clear the tube by flushing it with 10 ml of warm water. Use a pulsing start-stop motion to flush the tube. Call the child's gastroenterologist or surgeon if you cannot unclog the tube. Never try to push anything into the tube to unclog it. Things like soda or juice can make the clog worse. What to do if the G-tube falls out? If the G-tube falls out and someone is trained to replace it, it should be replaced. If no one is trained to replace the tube or it has been less than 12 weeks in surgery, do not put anything back into the G-tube site. Bring the child to the hospital emergency department within one to two hours to have the tube put back in. Get to the hospital as soon as possible because the G-tube site can close quickly. If you cannot get to the hospital where the original surgery was performed within two hours, go to the nearest hospital. Call your child's gastroenterologist or surgeon when you arrive to the hospital. Thank you for watching this video on the care and maintenance of gastrostomy tubes. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.